My name is Dennis. I'm a first year PhD student at the TU Berlin and Bifold. And this work or the results and the work I'm going to present today are um, highly based on previous work of my colleague Philipp Wiesner, who is uh, currently not here. So he has dedicated many years of his PhD into carbon aware cloud computing. And uh, we have joined forces to combine federated learning with this carbon aware uh, strategies. Uh, okay. So the agenda for now, just, uh, just in short, is first I'm gonna describe the problem with federated learning and machine learning before diving into uh, a quick one-on-one -on, -one on the energy mix. Then I'm gonna propose uh, two solutions to you. First one's called low carb and the second one fed zero that are um, built with the aim to reduce carbon emissions during training. And uh, in the end, we're gonna speak about some conclusion and next steps. So first of all, what's the problem with current machine learning? Uh, as you might have heard, um, common models, common, uh, yeah, oops, state of the art models use quite a lot of energy for training. And these are just the numbers that were reported. So uh, GPT-3, uh, GPT for example, used 1,200 megawatt hours of energy for training. And uh, taking, it into taking into consideration the average carbon intensity, this would have resulted in 611 tons of CO2 emitted. And what's with the problem with that? Well, uh, if you compare it as a reference with the average household in the EU, uh, which consumes just 3.7 megawatt hours per year, uh, you will quickly uh, realize that if we had as many GPT-3s as we have inhabitants in Europe, then we would have been out of coal for a long time already. And uh, now kind of switching topics to FL. So according to some sources, one which is listed here, which is also from uh, yeah, some, of, some of the people who are here today, the CO2 emissions for federated learning may be up to two orders of magnitude higher than for standard uh, machine learning. All right. First, I will. Uh, I would. I will. To. I want to give you a small um, introduction into the energy mix. So the energy that you consume when you plug in your cell phone uh, into a plug usually consists from different sources that have generated the energy. Here you see the average over the first half of 2021 in Germany, where you have almost 30 percent of uh, energy being generated by natural gas and 20, 28 percent by oil some by hard coal, 8% by ignite, and only 16.8% by renewables. And uh, as, you might as you might know, each of these sources emit a different value of, uh, of carbon. And how we measure this is actually by some a metric that's called the carbon intensity, which is the gram of CO2 equivalent uh, per kilowatt hours. And we're gonna use this metric to uh, introduce it into the federated learning process and trying to optimize this particular metric. The CO2 uh, or the carbon intensity highly depends on the location and the time. So for example, if we have here with the same uh, energy demand, two different time spots at the same location, we're gonna see one time spot looking over here where the um, uh, fractions of wind and solar in the energy mix are higher than a bit later. And this results in a higher carbon intensity at later time points. And this is exactly the property that we want to use in federated learning. So uh, with this, I'm going to introduce the, our first method to you called low carb, which uh, was a method that developed out of a hackathon that we won. The hackathon was organized by the Green Software Foundation, which is a subgroup of the Linux Foundation and sponsored by many different nameable companies over here. And the aim of the Carbon Hack was to come up with the most innovative carbon software solution that uses the Green Software Foundation's Carbon Aware SDK. And the Carbon Aware SDK uh, gives us basically these carbon intensity values given a location and time for historical moments of time, as well as forecasts. So our solution Low Carb um, has the main goal of selecting clients such that the carbon emissions are reduced while also ensuring fairness in participation. And uh, we have developed our methods or integrated our method within the FLOWER framework by basically in the end, uh, just uh, implementing a new client manager and using of course the information of the Carbon Aware SDK that the client manager then uses in order to se select the clients that have currently the most clean access uh, or the most, uh, the best access to clean energy. 
uh, our client selection algorithm optimizes two things. First of which is the carbon intensity, where in uh, each round uh, we are using looking at the client's forecasts and uh, the carbon intensity value of the client at a certain when the round starts and uh, into, into a certain future that we can get from the forecasts. And we pick the clients that have that give us the uh, least probability of improvement in future times, which can be thought of uh, if a client now has cleaner energy than in the future, then we want to select it now. And uh, vice versa, if a client has now, uh, as denoted by the green curve, some, some carbon intensity that's going to shrink throughout the future, then let's uh, wait with this client and pick him later. And this, of course, we scale then to a, a bit of bigger setup. And <clears throat> so here you see continuous curves of carbon intensity values. Of course, the API doesn't give that to us, but it gives us rather discretized uh, values. So here you have the discretization of one of the average carbon intensity between minute zero and 15, 15 to 30, and so on. And we could go get uh, to a granularity of uh, five minutes using that API. So as I just explained, what we do is, uh, what we use as a score is to compute the delta of average carbon intensity values of our clients from the current time step to all the future time steps, and then pick the client that gives us the least favorable score, which here in this case is a negative. So if a client starts at one and in the future it's at 10, uh, we compute the score by simply computing the delta, which is minus nine. And in this client, note here that the y-axis is a bit different. Our delta is uh, much uh, or less small. So we pick this client first. And um, how we integrate client participation or client fairness into this is, um, or basically the main goal first is we do not want to let only clients participate that have constantly uh, uh, ever or an average uh, clean energy over times, because this might lead uh, our federated learning model to be biased towards these clients' data. So we also optimize for client participation and we uh, tackle this by essentially uh, restricting the visible time window of clients um, with respect to the number of participations. So the length of the time of the, of the visible window that each client sees for its forecasts is uh, inverse proportional to its participation. Here, client one has two times participated, whereas client, uh, client one has two times participated, client two has once participated. So the, the, the visible window is uh, yeah, twice the size. Um, which um, intuitively uh, gives, which intuitively increases the probability that this client will find uh, an even bigger delta in the future. Okay, so here we pick client two, all nice. And we've evaluated our approach on the thorax disease classification data set. It's openly available. It's a 14 class multi-label classification data set. And we have split it to 10 different hospitals, which were our clients. Uh, here we have split them identically. This is uh, important. And uh, we have compared the random client selection with ours. And in ours, in this case, it, convert, it takes a bit uh, longer in the first communication rounds, but in the end, it converges at the same rate to the final accuracy that we achieve with the random one by saving 13% uh, emissions out of the box. And I mean, this uh, scheduler that we, that we built is, is really simple um, for sure. It, it's really simple because we were limited in time to implement this during the hackathon, but for sure there must be better scheduling algorithms that could take um, even more or could save even more emissions. Um, yeah, we have implemented this as a pip, pip package. You can just pip install it. Here's the project, project web page. And yeah, and now I come to the second half of my talk where I will present another method that we've developed called FAT0 um, jointly with a lot of co collaborators that you can see here, uh, all coming from different institutions. And before diving into what FAT0 does, I want to first introduce yet um, another component of the energy market, which is excess energy. So excess energy is defined as the difference between the pr power produced by renewables and the power consumption on the market. So here you can see um, this is the power consumption, this is the power production. And if we uh, subtract the power consumption for the production, then we get 
a positive part here, which is basically the renewable energy that is in the system or could be in the system, but it's not currently used by the grid. And since the grid, you or usually grids um, do not cannot handle so well big fluctuations of energy. Uh, what uh, usually is done is if this happens and the excess energy is really high, then institutions curtail this energy. So they basically turn off uh, solar or wind farms to plug their energy into the into the system. And this is because it's much easier to turn off uh, uh, a solar panel than uh, yeah, a nuclear generation, the nuclear generator. So what we do or want to do in FED zero is tackle exactly this energy and in the end be yeah uh, be able to to train a federated learning model on zero zero carbon uh, essentially because we're just tackling this energy so the, the requirements for us uh, in FED zero is that we are uh, dealing with cross silos so bigger institutions that uh, usually use a lot of energy and uh, uh, have access to local uh, producing grids here are listed some examples like health institutions, uh, but also autonomous vehicles, since they also uh, um, yeah, produce a lot of data and use a lot of energy while training. And the challenges are efficiency first. So FED Zero is designed with performance and energy efficiency in mind. We uh, have to deal with common power budgets. So in our case with FED Zero, we do not assign each client uh, a different power domain, but we have uh, depending on the location, we have certain clients that are all jointly connected to one power domain, like let's say one wind farm or one uh, solar generation uh, plant. Moreover, we also take into consideration the fairness of participation in order, as before with low carb, to not uh, take clients too off, to not let clients too often participate in the training process in order to mitigate data bias. Also, we have to be robust against forecasting errors, which um, I will show that FIT0 is. We have to scale. So the, um, the optimization problem that we solve under the hood in FIT0 needs to scale to potentially millions of clients. And um, yeah, next I'm going to present to you the FIT0 protocol. So what happens first is that each client who wants to participate uh, registers at the server with the following information. First, the number of training samples, the maximum computational capacity, energy efficiency, and its control plane addresses. The server then requires from the power domains that have registered each client, the expected computational load, as well as the expected renewable access energy. So we get this information from the power domains. Then we proceed with training, uh, collect the updates, aggregate the updates, and continue with the next round. So in the FED0 client selection, uh, we optimize for identifying end clients. So these are the selected clients that we want uh, in each federated learning round to participate in training, uh, to be able to reach the minimal local mini batches, which are set by the clients as fast as possible with respect to round duration. And we do this by iteratively uh, incrementing the round duration and seeing if we find and uh, solving a mixed integer problem that tries to assign um, as much mini batches as possible to end clients that have currently access to excess energy. Um, yeah, what we do before we put the potential clients into our mixed integer um, optimization problem is that we have a filter so we can filter out clients that do currently not have ac enough ex access to excess energy or that are um, already have a lot of load so they cannot do any additional computation. And we model load by implicitly um, uh, using a data set that's, con that's constructed from Alibaba cluster traces that we spread throughout the clients and say, okay, if the client uh, has access to excess energy currently, but does not have um, any capacity to do, to do any computation, then we throw it out and don't let it participate in the training as well. Yeah, and over participation is, um, we have a new method actually where we weight the probability of each client participating in training with um, some fairness measure. But in the end, we also have a block list where we uh, block certain clients that are really heavily over participating. Here is a 
a short summary of the algorithms. So what we require is a set of clients, set of power domains. Then here we start the optimization process of starting D, the round duration, which corresponds to communication round from one and increment it to D max. Then we filter out the power domains who are which do not have enough excess energy to participate in training. We filter out the clients that have uh, participated too much already or with respect to some fairness measure. And then in the end, um, we, we throw out the clients that do not, cannot compute a minimum set of uh, mini batches, MC min denoted here. And if our number of clients that remains is smaller than N, the number of clients that we want in each round to participate in training, then we increment this D. Otherwise, uh, we let our mixed integer uh, program find the best solution, which clients to pick and how many mini, mini batches they should run. Mm -hmm. I hear just a, a small overview of the optimization problem. So we optimize over these two variables which correspond to the client participation and the expected uh, mini batches they can do. Um, we want our expected mini batches to be in this range. So uh, bigger equal than MC min, the minimal number of mini batches, and also a maximum number of mini batches that also is set by the user. We want the expected batches uh, of each client to be um, able to be computed on this excess energy of the client. And we want the sum of our participating clients to be equal to, to n. In our experimental setups, we have looked at two scenarios. One global scenario where we have, where, which you can see here, the global curves um, are the excess energy uh, for different regions throughout the world, as well as for the co-located scenario where we have data for um, different power plants just in Germany. And as I said before, for in order to model the load that each client has, we use uh, Alibaba GPU cluster traces, which are also open source available. And we evaluated our process on Cypher 10, Cypher 100, Shakespeare for IID and non -IID, for the IID and non-IID use case. What we can see in the end here is, oops, sorry. So uh, first of all, what we can see is that Cypher 10 and Cypher 100 reaches the final accuracy of the random baseline, which just randomly selects uh, clients without taking into account how much excess energy they have. Yeah. Um, by um, And it reaches this accuracy of 30% faster. So FAT0 reaches this uh, accuracy of 30% faster than the random baseline with by using the same amount of energy. And this energy used is all excess energy, right? So energy that potentially has produced zero carbon. And for the Shakespeare experiment, um, we see that uh, our accuracy with, compared to the random baseline is a better by a factor of four, and uh, we have 33% less energy used. We also evaluated our approach to fairness in participation. So here we can see uh, FAT0. It um, picks uniformly clients out of each power domain, whereas the constraint random baseline does not. And even if we um, con if we put uh, an infinite amount of energy as well as capacity to just one power domain, here we see the random approach um, really over let's over participates clients from these power domains. Fed zero does a much better job to ensure fairness. Yeah, here we've just plotted robustness against uh, forecasting errors. So basically, uh, with forecasting errors, we are just slightly less good than uh, without forecasting errors. And here we see how the optimization problem scales with the number of participating clients. So it's, uh, yeah, we can run a lot of, uh, we can let a lot of clients participate in training. Okay, in summary, uh, FAT0 is a system that's designed for fast, fair, and efficient training of FL models that uses only renewable excess energy and spare computational capacity. It's uh, robust against uh, forecasting errors and highly scalable. And for future work, we want to integrate some more advanced client selection algorithms into our approach, like ORT, for example. And also we want to better understand the impact of periodic patterns of the data. So imagine that different regions throughout the world have slightly different data distributions. What does it do to your uh, federated learning problem when you first pick just clients from one region and then iterate over the regions or the data distributions in the end. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening to my talk.
Yeah. Thanks very much for the great talk. What we'll do is um, while Elijah sets up, we can take one or two questions as while he's um, yep. converting everything over. Um, and so, um, yeah, any, any questions from the audience? Feel free to. Yeah, Javier has a question. Yeah. So you you made use of a tool to enhance the client man planning manager to sample clients according to their uh, carbon emissions. Yes. Right? Uh, is this tool open source or can you talk about it a bit more? Um, yes. So the API is open source. You can use it. And this was for the first project that came out of this hackathon. But uh, the forecasting data for our uh, the follow-up paper is actually not open source, but we have um, had uh, the luck that they gave us free access to the forecasting data. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah.